Hey beautiful saints, um, I wanted to do a video on what the gospel is and what the gospel is not. Uh, I found a really good article by Dr. Harry Ironside. He, he was a, a wonderful man of God that really contended for the faith once to delivered unto the saints. And uh, you know, you want people to like you, uh, don't stand for anything. And I stand for the true gospel of grace and religious spirits hate it. They, I, they don't understand that no matter what level of sin somebody has, we're all equally lost in God's eyes. And once you're saved, it, you're not keeping salvation by what level of your righteousness you attain to. It's God that keeps you. Now, we're called, it says the just shall live by faith. We're called to live by faith as well as be saved by faith. I've never denied that. It's God's will that all his children, so as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As many as believe and trust in what he did, the death, burial, and resurrection, that he, it's his will that those people live for him, that they live godly lives. But it's not to be saved. It's never as part of salvation. Uh, so I wanted to explain that, that they, they, it, it's hard to explain because they really think they don't sin or they're not as much of a sinner, but they don't understand that we fail every day in our thought. We still get angry. We still get bitter. We still say things we shouldn't say. We have thoughts we shouldn't have. Um, there's sins of omission, sins we don't know we, we commit. And so when they say you can't. You, you have to forsake all willful, all sins willful. Uh, they just don't understand that verse in Hebrews. But they, they'll say you have to forsake all that or you can't be saved or you're not really saved or you can't stay saved or something. They don't realize their own failure because they stand condemned by the very standard that they put on others. So what's happening is they don't see their own sin. They can't. They're com completely blind to it. Well, I didn't break the commandments today. Really, the thought of foolishness is sin. Anything not of faith is a sin. Did you worry about a bill you had to pay? You didn't trust. That was fear. Fear is not of God. It's not of faith. You see, all have fallen short of the glory of God. It's why we don't look to ourselves for salvation at all. And they can twist it however they want. They can say, well, it's God doing it in me. Well, the Pharisee did that when he prayed too. I thank you, God, that I'm not like that publican over there. He went away unsaved. And the publican who just said, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's it. Went away justified. And that's try I'm trying to get people to see that, that we just rest in Christ. And, you know, it really doesn't promote more sin. I mean, it, you, you, you love God. It's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Remember when Jesus was so good and Peter's like, go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Isaiah said, uh, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. Uh, they realized how much they fell short of goodness in the sight of God. So let's look at Psalm 130. If thou, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? I mean, really, who should stand if God was to mark our iniquity? Nobody. So what they're really saying is, I'm better than you because I've forsaken more sin than you have. But they're blind to their own iniquity. They just look to the outer stuff. You know, they might have a habit or something. Uh, and they're going to condemn that person and say they're not really saved. They weren't serious about their faith. Well, you're not saved because you meant business. You're saved because God did. He meant business when he sent his son to die for you. And he said, if you trust in him and his death, burial, and resurrection, which is the gospel that saved us, he'll give you eternal life. It's a free gift. It's that simple. Now, it's God, God's will that all that the just should live by faith. This is everyone who names the name of the Christ, let him part, depart from iniquity. Amen. We all should. We should walk in newness of life. But it's not to be saved or to stay saved. Let's look at Isaiah. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. I, whether you're saved or not, because see, the flesh profits nothing. 
Paul said that. The good that I would, that I don't. The thing that I hate, that I do. It is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. So we have this constant struggle. The flesh was never perfected. Now, once we're saved, he gives us a desire to put that under subjection. And Paul tells us to abide in our new identity and renew our minds daily so we can overcome it. But nobody does that perfectly. And so what they're saying is, I'm better than you. And so therefore, if you don't get to my level of righteousness, you're not really saved. It's, it's really sad. All right, so this is a little thing called The Gospel Is and What the Gospel Is Not by Dr. Harry Ironside. The Gospel Is, not the Bible. In the first place, the Gospel's not the Bible. Often when I inquire, what do you think the Gospel is? People reply, why it's in the Bible and the Bible is the Word of God. Undoubted, undoubtedly. The Bible is the Word of God, but there's a great deal in the book that's not the Gospel. The wicked shall be turned into hell with all the nations that forget God. That's in the Bible, and it's terribly true, but it's not the Gospel. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That's in the Bible, but it's not the Gospel. Our English word Gospel just means good spell. The word spell is an old Anglo-Saxon word for tidings. Remember it talks about glad tidings uh, brought from a far country. Blessed are the feet that bring those. Uh, it's good news. The original word translated gospel, which we've taken over to the English with little alteration, is the word evangel. And that has the same meaning, the good news. The gospel is God's good news for sinners. The Bible contains the gospel, but there's a great deal in the Bible which is not the gospel. The gospel is not the commandments. The gospel is not just any message from God telling man how he should behave. What is the gospel? I asked the man this question some time ago, and he answered, why should I say... It's the Ten Commandments and the Sermon on the Mount. And I think if a man lives up to them, he's all right. Well, I fancy he would be, but do you know ever anybody who lived up to him? I don't. The Sermon on the Mount demands a righteousness which no unregenerate man has been able to produce. That's what I keep saying. Why do you tell unsaved people to be willing to turn from sin to be saved? They don't have a desire. The Holy Spirit's not in them. How can they want what God wants? You're asking the impossible, and that's not the gospel anyway. They could clean up their life and never be saved. That, that's why I'm, I'm trying to get people to get saved first. You know, it's the pastor's job to help them on their walk. I'm here to preach the gospel and to tell you what the gospel isn't. All right, the law is not the gospel. It is the very antithesis of the gospel. The gospel, it puts us under a curse. It's not good news. In fact, the law was given by God to show men their need of the gospel. Yes, so that every mouth may be stopped and all become guilty before God. The law was given so that sin might abound. That's a direct quote from scripture. The law, says the Apostle Paul, speaking as a Jewish convert, was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. But after that, Christ has come. We are no longer under the schoolmaster. The gospel is not repentance. The gospel is not a call to repentance or an amendment of our ways to make restitution for past sins or to promise to do better in the future. These things are proper in their place, but they do not constitute the gospel, for the gospel is not good advice to be obeyed. It is good news to be believed. How many times have I said that to you? You don't do the gospel, you believe it. Do not make the mistake of then thinking that the gospel is a call to duty or a call to reformation, a call to better your condition, to behave yourself in a more perfect way than you have been doing in the past. What else is the gospel not? It's not a call to give up the world. Nor is the gospel a demand that you give up the world, that you give up your sins, that you break off bad habits and try to cultivate new ones. You may do all these things and yet never believe the gospel and consequently, never be saved at all. This is what I try to do. I try to divide these false gospel messages that focus on man's righteousness and get you to the real simplicity that's in Christ. Remember, Paul said, I marvel you're so soon removed from he who called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that come in and trouble you and would pervert the gospel. See, they're adding man's righteousness. I'm not telling people not to live for God. They're, they're God, the just shall live by faith. We're told to live by faith. This is about getting people secure in their salvation so they can grow in relationship with God. Because see, when they feel condemned, they run from God. But the minute they hear this true gospel and the Holy Spirit seals them, they run towards God. They want to read their Bible. They tell people about Jesus. 
it works the opposite the way these people say. And it's okay. I can be condemned. They can make a hundred more videos. I think 22 were made against me last week. I'm not even going to answer it. I'm not answering it. Jesus didn't answer people that twisted his words. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to keep telling the good news to those that have an ear to hear and know what I'm really saying. Uh, so I, I really wanted to show you what uh, Dr. Harry Ironside said. I, I was so grateful to find this page. Uh, I loved, I, I just love his preaching. There's very few that actually preach the true gospel, but I wanted to show you uh, what it's not. Uh, and this, this whole thing, well, you, 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 you can't think you're saved and continue in sin, then nobody's saved. You're not either. And if you think you don't sin, you're, you're lying to yourself. You're deceived. You, you're blind to your own failure. See, we're not telling people to sin more so grace may abound, but it does. Where sin abounds, grace did much more abound. We know that. We're not, but, but he says, shall we sin more? Shall we sin so grace may abound? God forbid. We don't do it more. I mean, that doesn't even make sense. See, when you realize how much your dad loves you, you, you don't want to offend him more. It makes you want to run to him and have fellowship with him, and that's really where I'm hoping people get with this. You know, I think there's going to be a lot of people surprised. There's going to be a lot of bad people in heaven because of simply who they trusted in, and a lot of good moral people not there because they trusted in their own righteousness. God simply imputes his righteousness on anyone who believes on the Son. This is the work of God that you believe on he whom he sent. And what's interesting about that verse is that they very specifically asked, what are the works of God we can do to get eternal life? They asked, what, what are the works we do to get eternal life? This is the work of God, one, that you believe on he whom he sent. So I hope we can stand firm in uh, grace because it can't be qualified for. It can't be earned or merited or it's no longer grace. It's dead. All right. God bless.